Family Theater presents Bill Williams and Barbara Hale. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Rim Rock, starring Bill Williams. And now, here's your hostess, Mrs. Bill Williams, or should I say, Barbara Hale. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we're to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, Rimrock, starring Bill Williams as Link. Needle Valley didn't look much different in 1866 than when I last saw it. Maybe four years of fighting had changed me a little, but not the valley. I stood for a minute at the head of the trail, watching the red sun drop down behind the rim rock. And then I nosed my barred roam toward the shadowy floor of the canyon. <laughs> a few moments earlier, I had to take off my hat to mop the perspiration from it. But now I was cold. This was a bad way to begin tooling someone else's horse into the valley with a loaded six-gun riding on my hip. Bad enough a way for anyone to come home, much less a minister of the gospel. Easy, easy, boy. What's the matter, fella? What's the matter? Now, easy, easy, settle down. Easy, boy. Someone's sure enough waiting for us. Now, easy, boy, settle down. Settle that horse, Put up your hands. Easy, fella, easy. All right. My hands are up. You keep them there. Yes, ma'am. You got a six-gun, Parson? Yes, ma'am. Lift it out of the holster by the handle with your thumb and forefinger. Now, drop it. Who are you? Why, well, I'm Parson. I can see that. What are you doing here? Well, I'm, uh, I'm looking for Whitley Archer. What for? Sheriff Kiefer got a note from him. Did you bring the deed? No, I... It's all right. I'm his daughter. You can give it to me. I didn't bring it. The other man wasn't around. Even if he had been, he wouldn't have signed it. Avery? I think that's his name. Doesn't Avery know we got his partner? Didn't the sheriff tell him? I just told you Avery wasn't around. And you don't have the deed? No, ma'am. Then why'd you bother to come at all? Did the sheriff think maybe Dad was bluffing? Not from what he told me. Why'd they send you anyhow? Just because you're a parson? Well, I... I guess they figure trouble like this sort of falls into my province. You're wasting your time. If you don't have that deed with you, Alan Barber's as good as dead right now. Your father would kill a man for 20 acres that's nothing but rock and scrub grass? He'd kill a man for stealing what was his. You don't know Alan Barber. You're new here, newer than we are. Dad's only had this spread two years. And right from the beginning, Barbara's been in with every carpetbagger like Avery that's come along, bleeding everybody white, hating the world. He's nothing but a thieving, bitter old man. That's still no cause to kill him. Parson, he stole our land. Well, maybe if I could talk to your father. It won't do no good. You don't want to see him hang, do you? That's what'll happen if he kills Barbara. Most folks hereabouts would thank him. That still won't keep him off the gallows. I don't know what to do. Well, take me down and let me talk to him, Miss Archer. Can't do any harm. You won't change him. He's got his mind set. Killer never put anything to rights. It's easy for you to talk like that. You're a parson. I wasn't always. And you don't know Barber. That's the main thing. You just don't know what he's like. We started down the trail into Needle Valley. The girl walking a few yards behind me, carrying her rifle and my six-gun. The sun had vanished behind the high cliffs, and the last purple light of day was fading fast. In the distance, along the foot of the eastern wall of the canyon, I could make out a cabin with a corral. And as we drew closer, I wondered if perhaps I shouldn't have told the girl that I did know Alan Barber, that I knew him well, even though I hadn't seen him in five years, the five years since he threw me out of his house. 
I won't have a coward for a son. Get out. I'm not a coward. You're a yellow, sniveling coward. I won't take up a gun and kill. You mean you won't defend your own home and land? I don't believe in killing. Because the good book says so. Yes. Uh, it also says an eye for an eye. Uh, killing is wrong it, in any cause. Ah, you should have been a girl. You're your mother all over again. Lily livered. You shut up about her. Don't tell me to shut up. Now, get out. You're no son of mine. You won't fight for your own side, so get out and don't come back. I was 19 then. 19 years of trying to be the kind of a son that Alan Barber wanted. But I never once made him proud of me. He didn't say so while Mother was still alive, but it was there. Hidden behind his eyes, and I could see it. And yet I never stopped trying to please him. When the war came and he turned me out, I joined the Confederate Army so I could come home again. I fought and I killed, and I prayed to be forgiven by God and my father. I was discharged in Memphis, and I wrote him a letter that I wanted to stay there and study for the ministry, and then come back home and start a parish. But he didn't reply. For a year I wrote, every week, and never an answer. And then this afternoon, when I got off the stage at Templeton, Sheriff Kiefer was waiting. Pink, Pink Barber. Yes? You, uh, you're a minister now? That's right, Sheriff. Well, should I call you a reverend? Uh, we'd better make it link for the time being. What's wrong? Well, it's your dad. He's been took as a hostage by Whitley Archer. By whom? Well, he's new here, got us spread out in Needle Valley. Your dad and a man from the north named Avery took up the land for taxes, and, well, now they won't sign it back. Why not? Well, they think there's gold on it. And you say this man's holding my father? Yep. Well, I got a letter here from Archer saying he's going to kill him if your dad and Avery don't settle for the price offered him and turn back the land. Where's this man, Avery? Oh, forget him. What? Well, he rode out of town the other way soon as he heard about your dad. Uh, nothing that suits him better than to own that land all by himself. You mean he didn't even try to help? That man wouldn't help his grandmother out of a well if it cost him a quarter. What are you going to do? Well, anything you want, but... Uh, well, I got a feeling that if I close in on Archie with a posse, your dad'll be dead by the time we get to him. You really think Archer would kill him? Well, he's been driven pretty far. Here's the note. Come alone and bring the signed deed to my land by sundown. It won't do Barber any good after that. Signed, Whitley Archie. So, that's the way it is. Sheriff, I'd like to borrow a horse from you. Why, sure, Link. And a gun. It was almost dark when I brought my horse to a stop in front of Whitley Archie's cabin. A gas lamp burned in the front window. I looked back at the girl, still holding her rifle on me. For a moment, she hesitated. Then, as she started to speak, the front door of the cabin swung open, and a tall, gray-haired man wearing a six-gun walked out onto the stoop. Dad. It's all right, Ann. I've been watching you come down the valley. Sheriff Kiefer sends you? Yes, in a way. Dad, he's the new parson. Well, he didn't look very familiar. I just arrived in town three hours ago. Well, welcome to Templeton. It could use a few more law-abiding men. Like yourself? I'm just protecting what's mine, Parson. I hand over that deed and you can take Barbara back with you right now. I don't have it, Miss Archer. Avery wouldn't sign it. You're bluffing. No, he's not, Dad. Then why'd you bring him down here? I wanted to talk to you. Turn your horse around and get out. Dad. You could at least listen to what I have to say. I know what you're going to say, Parson. Killing Barber won't get my land back. Well, maybe it won't. Plus which you'll hang. If they take me. And what about your daughter? How's this going to leave her fixed? No home, no father? Parson, for two years I've been trying to live here in peace and make a home for Ann. But Avery and Barber wouldn't have it. First they tried to buy this spread. Then they tried to scare me off. Then finally, they pulled this last trick, taking it up for taxes and trying to force me out. Well, it ain't gonna work. Maybe I won't get this land, but they won't either. What's Barbara got to say about all this? He's a stubborn old fool. 
But I'll give him one thing he don't scare very easy. He won't sign the deed even to save himself? He hasn't got it. Besides, he said it was Avery that bought up the tax receipts. Uh, I wonder if you'd let me have a few words with, uh, with Barbara. No. Dad, it might help. I said no. You could be missing a bet, Miss Darcher. I don't think Barbara knows Avery's run out on him. If their deals are as shady as you say, Barbara's probably got enough on his partner to send him to prison. And what are you getting at? He could probably force Avery to sign that deed, if he threatens to expose him. That way, they'd both go to jail. Possibly. But I never met a man who wouldn't choose a cell over a grave. Let him try it, Dad. It might work. I, I, I don't think so. Just give me five minutes with him. That's not much to ask. All right, Parson. Five minutes. The only light in Whitley Arch's cabin was the oil lamp by the window. The red embers of a log still glowed in the small fireplace, but they showed no feature of the tall, white-haired man seated in the chair by the hearth. It was only when Anne brought the lamp that I could tell Alan Barber's arms and legs were bound to the chair and that a handkerchief was tied across his mouth. He looked up at me as Archie undid the gag, and I saw his eyes flash in recognition. Well, now, isn't this touching? Uh, I'm the new parson, Mr. Barber. I, I just arrived this afternoon, and Sheriff Kiefer sent me out to speak to you. Huh? He's trying to save your neck, Barber. You'd better listen to him. You mean they don't... I'm the parson, and it's my duty to help prevent bloodshed. Uh, Mr. Archer said I could talk with you, if you're willing. Why, sure, sure, parson. I'll be glad to talk to you alone. Nothing doing. Dad, they aren't armed. I don't care. I got the parson's gun and Barbara's tied up. You can cover us from outside through the window if you're so scared, Archer. I'm not scared of you, you thieving coyote. I give you my oath, Miss Archer. He won't leave this chair. You ought to be willing to take the sworn word of a parson, Archer, a Bible-spouting squatter like you. You shut your trap. Dad, please. You've got my word, Miss Archer. I just want to talk to him. Your solemn word as a minister? Yes. All right. But if you try anything, Barbara... He won't. I promise you. Come on, Dad. Let's leave him alone. I'll be watching through the window. <laughs> Don't blink now. I might fly away. Just try it and I'll... Dad! Oh, all right, all right. Well, just talk for a minute or two. Get him off their guard. You got a pocket knife? Yes. Good boy. Don't reach for it yet. Hmm. Never expected you'd be getting me out of this jam, Link. I'll wager you didn't. You're grown up. You look fit. I've learned a few things, too. You really a preacher? Yes, sir. Is there much money in it? I'm not in it for the money, Dad. <laughs> Funny to hear you call me that. You did what I told you, though, huh? Went off and joined up? Yes. Mm -hmm. Where'd you fight? Shiloh, Bull Run, lots of places. I wouldn't have thought you had it in you. I didn't. I hated every minute of it. Archer's in the window, so is the girl. Keep talking. I went because you wanted me to, but I hated it. Was well, nothing anybody's got to like, son. It's misery and killing and dying. But a man's got his duty. Maybe. You've done yours. So far as I'm concerned, the slate's clean. You want to be a preacher? All right. And there don't have to be any money in it. I've made enough for both of us. So I understand. Preaching's a nice, respectable profession, too. Slide out your knife and start on the rope on my left foot. Your mother's uncle was a preacher. Maybe that's where you get it. Go on. They ain't looking. Slide out your knife. I'm not cutting you loose. Huh? You wouldn't get three feet from this chair before Archer'd blow your head off. <laughs> sure I will. They wouldn't shoot you. Don't be too sure. I'll use you for a shield. They don't know you're my boy. They wouldn't kill a preacher. Go on, Link. Start cutting. I'll be glad to. Ah, that's more like it. Just as soon as you sign this land back to Archer and let him give you the tax money. What are you saying? I'm saying you robbed him. And don't tell me you can't sign it over because Avery paid the taxes. I know a little about the law. But I... I don't have the deed. We'll draw up a deed in fact. And what you sign, your partner's committed to. That's the way a partnership works. I won't do it. You'll do it or I'll tell Archer you're lying and let him settle with you. Uh, Archer wouldn't shoot a man in cold blood. He hasn't got the heart for it. I wouldn't bank on that. I'm willing to. I'm not signing back this land, son. It's worth too much. Do you know your partner's run out on you? Avery's just playing it smart. If he was around, I couldn't work this yarn on Archer. 
You mean you planned it? No, but we figured something might come up when we tried to evict this polecat. Dad, I'm not going to let you get by with robbing him. How are you going to stop me, son? The way I said, by telling him you can't sign back the land without your partner. <laughs> Don't do it. You'll be sorry. You're going to give him back that land. He'll never believe you when I get through talking. We'll see about that. Archer! Yeah, yeah what is it? Did you convince him, Parson? I convinced him. Come on in. How much do you know about partnership law, Mr. Archer? Well, I... Uh, hardly anything, I guess. It won't work, Link. Archer's no fool. Hey, what's he talking about? N- now listen to me. He called you Link. Is that your name? Of course it's his name. My name doesn't matter. I'm trying to tell you something. This man can sign a deed in fact that'll legally turn your land back to you. Say, just who are you, mister? Never mind who I am. I'm trying to tell you he doesn't need Avery's signature. He can do it himself. is isn't going to work, Link. They don't believe you. Hey, Barber, who is this man? What's he to you? What's the difference who I am? Shut up. Who is he, Barber? He's my son. Your son? I don't believe it. Search him, then. He's probably got papers on him, and he's just trying to help me. Look, Archer, it doesn't matter who I am. You stay right where you are. Get his wallet, Annie. Yeah. I got it. All right. I am his son. But what I'm trying to tell you isn't changed by that. Here's some letters addressed to Lincoln R. Barber. And that's you, Parson? Yes. But you got to listen to me. If my father makes out a deed and signs it, this land goes back to you. Sure it does. And he walks out of here scot-free and I'm left holding a worthless piece of paper. It won't be worthless. Son, it's no use. Dad, you've got to tell him the truth. Uh, the truth is I'm licked. Thanks for trying to help. But if Archer wants to kill me, there's nothing I can do. You're lying. I think you'd better leave, Parson. But listen... I can't blame you for trying to save your father's life. But I'm telling you now, get out. You don't believe what I said? I... I don't. I can't. Even if I give you my solemn oath? Link, don't do it. Nothing's worth that. Not to me. Not even telling the truth? But it wouldn't be the truth. All right, Father. You've bluffed me good tonight. Now, let's see how far you're willing to go. You got a Bible, Archer? Why, uh, yes, but... Link, don't swear to a thing that's wrong. I don't intend to. Where's your Bible? Up there on the mantel. Thank you. Uh, Parson, think of what you're doing now. I thought it over carefully. This is the holy book, Father. It's probably been a long time since you've seen one. Link, you don't have to do this for me. I'm not going to do anything. But I want you to place your hand on this Bible and swear before God that your signature on a deed won't legally give Archer back his land. What? You heard me. Go on, swear it. Put your hand on that book and swear it. I... I don't have to swear to anything I don't want to. You shouldn't be afraid to take an oath on the truth. I'm not afraid. Then put your hand on this Bible and swear it. No. Let's see if you're willing to buy this land at the price of your own soul. You know I'm not a a religious man. uh... Seems you've got enough sense to be God-fearing. Wouldn't mean anything. I won't do it. Archer, he's, he's just bluffing. I don't think so, Barber. I think you can make out that deed, and I'm going to have you do it right now. I won't. It won't be legal. I'll take my chances. Annie, get some writing paper. No, you can't make me. Hey, they shot out the light. Sounded like it came from up the canyon. Not too far off. It's a posse. That's what it is. You're going to have to let me go, Archer. You leave when you sign that deed. I'll never sign it. Doesn't look like any posse to me. Only one rifle going. It's pretty dark out there. And the moon's coming up. I can't see anything. Get back from the windows, Annie. Let me swing open that front door. Maybe we can see a little better. It's the sheriff. You better give up, Archer. You keep your mouth shut or I'll put that gag back in it. I'm going to swing the door open slowly now. Everybody keep down. All right. Do you see anything? No, but I... Archer! Archer, can you hear me in there? It's Avery! It's my part. Shut up. What's he doing out there shooting at us? I think you better answer him, Mr. Archer. I hear you, Avery. What do you want? You've got my partner and his boy in there. Send him out right now. What if I don't send them out? You'll be sorry. If it takes me ten years, I'll make you and your daughter sorry. Uh, you'd better untie me, Archer. He means business. Yeah, Parson, looks like you won after all. This isn't any play of mine, and I don't like the way it's going either. Cut me loose, Archer. Do do what he says, Annie. Dad, wait a minute. What are you talking? Wait a minute. Cut me loose, girl. 
All right. Dad, listen to me. I don't like this. Avery doesn't mean you any good. What are you talking about? Why does he want both of us to walk out there? How does he know I'm here? Probably heard it from the sheriff. Avery rode out of town before I got off the stage. If he'd come back and gone to the sheriff for help, there'd be a posse out there. Not just one man with a rifle. Well, maybe he just drifted back into town, decided to handle it himself. Well, I'm no hostage. He doesn't have to help me. What are you talking about? I think Avery was banking Archer would kill you today, so he'd have the land all to himself. You're crazy, son. Then why didn't he come out here this afternoon? I told you. But now he finds out I've turned up and he's here. Why? Because it won't do him any good unless we're both killed. I'm your legal heir and he still have to split the land with me. You've got just one minute, Archer! If you don't send Barbara and this boy out by then, I'll figure him for dead and stay here till I get you! They're not dead, Avery. They're coming out. Dad, think about it. Avery wants us to walk out there so he can pick us off. After that, he can take his time about handling the archers. Link, you're talking like a fool. You don't know Avery. He won't even have to shoot them if he can make it look as though they've killed us. Almost through with those ropes, girl. Yeah, that's the last. Well, son, are you coming? Dad, don't... A little earlier tonight, I thought you'd gotten over being a coward. Maybe you thought wrong. Mr. Archer? Yes, Parson? Can I have my six-gun back? I guess so. Annie? Here's your gun, Link. Thanks, Ann. That make you feel any braver, son? A little. But I'm still frightened. Yeah? For you. We walked out across the moonlit stoop and started up the trail, my father and I. I looked at him once, tall, his hair shining like silver in the moonlight. And I thought of how it could have been if things had been different. His face was strong and leathery, and he didn't look 50. I remember once, when I was 12, how he'd taken me hunting. And another time, we rode into Laredo on my 15th birthday, and he bought me a pair of high black boots. He started with everything it took to be a great man. I wondered where he'd lost it. We moved on, not talking. And then as we came to a place where a sharp outcropping of rock overhung the trail, the figure of a man holding a rifle loomed up about a dozen yards before us. I couldn't make out his face, but Father seemed to recognize him immediately. He started forward toward him with his hand outstretched, and I saw the rifle come up and... Clint! Dad! Father! Dad, Dad, it, it's Link. Are you hit bad? Parson, Parson, are you all right? Yes, I'm all right. Did you get Avery? Yeah, I got him. But we better get my father down to your cabin. When the sun came up the next morning, Needle Valley didn't look much different from the last time I'd seen it. I was sitting at my father's bedside as the first gray shadows crept over the rim rock and down along the jagged walls of the canyon. Seen from the cabin window, for a while it all looked beautiful. But then as the sun gradually rose higher, the sharp, dark outlines of the valley came clear. Shriveled mesquite and choke scrub grass. Hot, parched ground that maybe had some gold underneath it. And maybe not. Son, Link. Yes, Dad. Some, some water. Sure. Here, not too much. I, I'm dying, Link. Don't talk like that. Arch is gone for a doctor and you'll be fine. Oh, there, there's no doctor in Templeton. He'll find one. Uh, you, you fought at Shiloh, eh? That's right. Uh, bull Run? Yes. Uh, was it bad? Pretty bad. Uh, you must have shot straight, though. The way you got Avery... Yes. Uh, oh, I, uh, I never knew you, did I, Link? We, we never got to know one another. Well, Dad, no, we, we... No, we didn't. Uh, so you're, you're a preacher. You're, you're gonna start your church here? I plan to. Ah, uh, you, you were always doing things. <laughs> Trying to make me like you, weren't you? I, I guess so. You were tall and strong, and, well, I wanted you to like me. Uh, did you tell the archer girl I, I signed the deed? Yes. Uh, you know, funny thing. What's that? Uh, I did that to, to make you like me. Did you? 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, Link. Look how the sun's coming up. Pretty, huh? Uh, I, uh, I didn't take a false oath either. Uh, I knew it was wrong, and you, you wouldn't like it. You rest now. Don't talk anymore. Uh, I see. It's all gold, the valley. I know. Yeah. You won't, won't forget to say prayers for me. Never. Uh, valley's all gold. <laughs> Funny. What's that? Uh, I wonder what I ever saw in it. This is Barbara Hale again. I think no one will disagree that as far as worldly goods are concerned, there are, roughly speaking, two kinds of families. Those who have enough and those who haven't. There may be many degrees in each category, and the dividing line isn't always obvious. But roughly, that's about the way it stacks up. The same is true regarding family happiness. We know that some families are unhappy even though they have millions. While on the other hand, there are families who cling closer together in their poverty. Love lights the hearth even when there isn't a fire. The point of all this is that none of us is self-sufficient. And even the closest family isn't sufficient unto itself. If we have enough, we may lose it. We know how precarious health and fortune can be. If we haven't enough, we need the serenity and the peace that only prayer, daily family prayer, can give us. It won't necessarily guarantee health or immediate success, but it will bring its blessings. And if family peace is all but a stranger in our homes, it could be because our Heavenly Father is a stranger there too. This is why we are urged to pray, to pray together daily if possible as families. Family Theater tells us each week this very simple but very mighty truth. The family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed Rim Rock, starring Bill Williams. Barbara Hale was your hostess. Others in our cast were Vivi Janis, Tudor Owen, Jack Carroll, and Leo Curley. The script was written and directed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly, with music composed by Harry Zimmerman and conducted by Henry Mancini. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our Family Theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when Family Theater will present The Rainbow Chaser, starring Marshall Thompson. Joan Leslie will be your hostess. Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America.